Alrighty guys, today I'm gonna to be talking about my favorite cruelty-free drugstore brands and some of my favorite products from each one. So some of these I have kind of not really like bought much from lately. So maybe it's stuff that I used before that I liked and like used up or went bad or something. And then some of them I have a lot from like e.l.f. So, so the first brand I wanna talk about, I know you probably heard of them for everybody but elf so everything that elf makes is vegan which is amazing i know like up until a couple years ago i think they just had a few brushes that had animal hair but now they're totally vegan so it's really awesome to be able to shop at especially a, such an inexpensive brand and know that everything that you're picking up is vegan you don't have to read the ingredients or look for the little vegan symbol i've got quite a few favorites from them i don't have a favorite in every single category and it's not because like I don't like the products, it's because I just don't have them. So I'm gonna start, I guess, in the order that, that I would apply stuff because there's a lot here. Um, the first thing is this e.l.f. Duh, e.l.f. Hydrating Primer. So this is a, there's generally two types of primers, at least in my experience. There's ones that are like hydrating and are going to help you if you have like dry skin and make the makeup go on smoother. And then there's like silicone-y pore filling ones that for if you have oily skin or large pores that will kind of smooth the texture. But this is actually a combination of both. So I do have combination skin. I get oily, but I also have dry patches. So this is uh, perfect for me. So I have gone through, I think only one of these, I just opened this one. This people, there was like a big scandal a couple years ago, like that elf didn't put like hardly any product in these, but the, my last one lasted me forever. And I don't use a full pump of this either. I feel like a full pump would be way too much. So I just use a little bit like kind of in the center of my face, but not really like around my chin or on like top of my forehead or anything, just kind of like around my nose and, and maybe like, or maybe like on the top part of my chin, I'll put a little bit, but not like way down here, you know? Then a new favorite from e.l.f. is the Hydrating Camo Concealer. So I never tried the original Camo Concealer, but this one is amazing. Um, I put it under my eyes. I have been having a lot of um, anxiety, not really sleeping, you know, like everybody does, I'm sure. But this has really helped my under eyes, like when I put it on. I'm actually not, I'm not wearing a lot of this stuff today. I didn't plan very well, but this is... Um, amazing. It does have a ton of shade options though. I know Elf used to like be very, very limited in their shade selection, like three shades of white and maybe one shade of medium, but this one has a ton for light, medium, and dark skin. So highly recommend this one. And then here's a blush from Elf. This is the, they don't put names on stuff. I'm pretty sure this is called the Primer Infused Blush and I have the shade Always Cheeky. I am, I am wearing this one today though. I didn't remember that. And I really like this blush and it does stay on a little bit longer than other blushes. I just kind of, sometimes I don't even care about blush because they don't stay on. Like they just kind of disappear really fast. And this one is really good. And they do, this one is matte, but they did make um, shimmer ones. So I might be checking that out. I'm probably gonna get some more elf stuff because Jay Kissa is about to launch a collection with them very, very soon. So I'm gonna pick up that and then probably some other stuff from e.l.f. So I might, if they have the shimmery ones in stock, I think last time I looked, they didn't have the shimmery ones. And then this one is the baked highlighter. I have to think of the name of it because it doesn't say, but the shade is called Moonlight Pearls. And I got this one back when, actually another product from this collab they did too, but they collabed with a couple of influencers and they donated proceeds of the sale to like different charities. And this one was Logical Harmonies one. And um, I am wearing this one today too also. So um, I wear this one on its own or with like over top of a cream highlighter. And this one I've used so much that it's like kind of flattened itself. Like it used to be pretty round and now it's pretty flat. So I definitely like this one. And this is a little bit, it's not really like a white kind of silvery highlight, like really pale ones are. This is more of like a, I'd say almost a white gold, maybe a little bit of a tan kind of color in there. So this one I haven't opened yet because I just used one up and then I am using one from another brand that I am working on, you know, trying to use up before I open another one. But I'll just open this to show you and then put it back. Like if I have a backup, I like keeping it in the box. That way I know like which one is the old, the new one, you know. But this is the Ultra Precise Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. 
and it's just a pretty standard like eyebrow pencil with the little pencil on one side and then the spoolie on the other. This one is really, really nice and it is very, very inexpensive. I know NYX makes one too, but I this one I think is a little bit cheaper and it does pretty much the same thing. It's not going back in there. But e.l.f. does make a different eyebrow pencil that's in a white package and it's a little bit thicker. I'm not a big fan of that one. This one's a little bit skinnier of a point and I like this a lot better. And then an eyeshadow palette from e.l.f. So I have sworn off of buying like pre-made eyeshadow palettes now I'm trying to only buy singles but if you are in the market for inexpensive eyeshadow and bright eyeshadow this is the Mad for Matt um, Jewel Pop palette. So this one like I was talking about where they did the collab with uh, Logical Harmony they did this one with Jay Kissa and um, this is just amazing palette. I had the original Mad for Matt. I wasn't big, that big of a fan of it, but this one I really like and I am wearing it today. So I am trying to do more like kind of experiment with it more. I did a different kind of look. You really can't even see it, but my uh, mascara was not cooperating today. So, and then I also bought this on Jake's recommendation, but um, this is the e.l.f. No Budge Shadow Stick. So I have two of them. I have the shade Perfect Pearl and Rose Gold. So I have Perfect Pearl in my inner corners today. This eyeshadow, or this, um, these sticks last forever. Like, when I put them in my inner corner, they don't come off. Even with, like, making mirror and stuff, it takes me a little while. So these are really good if your eyeshadow kind of, like, comes off throughout the day, or, um, if you want something really long-lasting, maybe a base for another eyeshadow. They only have a few shades of these, uh, but I would definitely be interested in, like, more, because they just have, like, kind of neutral colors. I think it'd be cool for them to make brighter colors. However, this formula, you just have to be careful with it because it's not super blendable. So if you put it on, I would do like one eye at a time, like swipe it on, throw the pencil down and grab your brush really quick and blend it out because uh, they set really fast. And they do have a sharpener on the end also. So if you want a more precise point, I need to do that with this one. But this one fell out of the packaging. Like if I open it, sometimes it flies out. Maybe it's the other one. I don't know, one of them like flies out when I open it, so just be careful about that. So the last thing from e.l.f. is kind of off the trend of the other stuff that I was talking about, but this is their glitter primer. So I did used to use one from NYX, but it's actually not vegan, so this one is vegan because it's from e.l.f. And it just has this little, it, you could almost confuse it for a lip gloss because it's in like a lip gloss tube. But I just take a little tiny bit of this in the back of my hand with a really small eyeshadow brush and put that on if I'm going to do like a really intense shimmer or glitter, obviously, and it works really great for that, as it should, because it's a glitter primer, you know. So the next one is NYX. Now, usually, or used to, you could only get NYX at like Ulta or on their website, or there used to be, way back in the day when I first started doing like YouTube and stuff, there was a website called Cherry Culture where you can get NYX stuff and they would always have it on like super sale. So I used to have a ton of NYX, but I got rid of some of their stuff because, so basically cruelty free kind of, it's like you have to decide for yourself what you want to use. So I used to not be okay with NYX because their parent company is L'Oreal, L'Oreal Tests on Animals. So I've kind of evolved my, what I, what I consider to be cruelty free since then. So I do feel like it's okay to buy from NYX now, but just use your own discretion. So if you don't care about NYX, then you can skip this part. Um, I actually recently, I got all the stuff. I went to the NYX store, which is a pretty cool experience. I wish they would open more of those. They only have, there's only a few, I think, um, not anywhere close to me. But I used to collect stuff from NYX. Like I had almost all their butter glosses before I decided that I hated lip gloss. And then I, um, had their had this line called macaroon lipsticks and they were just like a bunch of weird colors and I never wore them but I just had all of them that was a, a thing but so anyways I've got three things from them that I have recently and um, this is the can't stop won't stop foundation so this has an amazing shade range again and this is my absolute favorite foundation it kicked out the cover fx power play because this is just fabulous and it's a lot cheaper. The only problem that, that people seem to have with it is the pump, but I mean, that's fine for me at least. Like this makeup, I'll probably wear this to my wedding because that's how good it is. It stays on, stays matte. It's great. So I used to, when I first got into makeup, I used to think that makeup wasn't good if it 
wasn't matte. <laughs> like if there was a foundation that was meant to have like a more dewy finish, I was like, this stuff is terrible. <laughs> but um, now I've learned that there are different finishes. This one definitely has a matte, like a matte to satin kind of finish, but you can definitely powder it to get it to stay matte. And speaking of that, this is the matte finish setting spray. So I used this back in the day, I repurchased it recently. And what I use this for now, I will, uh, they've, I think they might have fixed the formula a little bit because it used to be you would spray it on and there'd be like white dots all over your face. But now it's fine, I think. So um, I'll spray it on after makeup and then also I'll use this before I put on my makeup, like I'll, before even primer and it helps to control oil throughout the day. And the last thing from NYX is this lingerie push-up long-lasting lipstick in the shade Embellishment. So I have two shades of this. This is my favorite shade. They have quite a few different ones. But it's just that pencil kind of style. And then it has a sharpener on the other end. And um, I really like this formula. It It is, it feels kind of like it's plumping, but it doesn't have like a minty smell. It's probably just got that like tingly, whatever that stuff is in it. And um, yeah, I really like the shade and I would probably check more of these out um, if I was hurting for lipstick, which I am not, so. Uh, but I really like this formula. And it is a thinner matte formula, some matte lipsticks. Um, like I know I have this one from e.l.f. or from NYX, that's why I didn't include it. This is the suede matte lipstick. This one is a little bit of a thicker formula and I prefer the uh, laundry push-up because it's a little bit thinner and a little bit more comfortable. All right, so we're getting there. Um, the next one I'm gonna talk about is Milani. So I used to use a lot more of the products. I had like some of their lipsticks and then also um, their eyeshadow primer was one I wanted to mention, but I don't have one right now because I used up my one that I had and I'm using a different one from a different brand, but their eyeshadow primer is worth checking out. And then, um, so I have a couple of their setting sprays. So they make it last, which you can see I clearly like it because it's um, almost finished. But they have this one, and then they have the Make It Dewy. So the Make It Dewy one is, um, it's a pretty good name because, I mean, this looks like you have just been, like, drenched in something. Like, so if you want a really dewy finish or that, like, glass skin kind of look, I would definitely go for this one. And then this is one of my favorites. I actually discovered this because of Emily Noel 83. There's a lot of makeup that I've gotten from her, like the, like the Milani eyeshadow primer, but this is the... Milani Prep Set and Glow. So they have one called Prep Set and Go, but this one is Prep Set and Glow. So you can tell I've used it quite a bit. And I cannot find this anywhere. The only place that I've ever seen it that has it is their website. So I might consider getting that. But this just has, like if you swatch it on your finger and like kind of, I don't know, it's something about it. If you look really close, it looks like it has shimmer, but it's really, really, really fine. And it just makes your skin kind of have that all over highlighted, but not, it's like really, really subtle. So I really like that effect of this because I do, I feel like I have to set my makeup with powder. I know you don't, but this helps to make it not so like heavy and powdery and it will have like a matte feel to it, but it's not gonna be like cakey because it does have that slight reflect of the little shimmer things in there. And last one from Milani is this Luminoso blush. So this is the oldest product in my collection. It's still going strong. I've, st I've been using it recently and um, I've kind of like hit the pan on this side. It'd be really cool if I could use this up, but I probably won't be able to. But they still make this and they have several different shades of this as well. And this lasts a long time and it's um, just a really good color, really universal. I haven't really heard of anybody that like any specific skin tones or undertones this that this Luminoso doesn't work for, so, you know. I did used to have a couple of their other colors, like they had one called Dolce Pink or something, and that was like way too bright for me. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is ColourPop. So I know ColourPop is kind of, sort of drugstore, like they're in the drugstore price, but they're not as easily available as these other brands, so I'll mention them last. So I'm sure if you're on like the online makeup, you heard of ColourPop. Actually, I've looked at their website yesterday and they, like everything is sold out. So I don't know, maybe it's because they were shut down for a little while, but anyways, so I just want to mention a few things here. You can get some of these at Ulta, um, but this is the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel in the shade Blonde. So I use this every day, like as a first step for my brows, and then I'll just kind of fill in the rest with a pencil. It really helps my pencils to last longer, so I'm not like filling in the whole thing with the pencil. 
but this one is like almost out and it's kind of gross looking, but it has a really small wand bristle thingy on there and I just I think this is a good one. I like this better than the elf one, which is why I didn't include the elf one because elf has a similar, um, there's what's called the wow brow. So it's good brow. This one has fibers in it though. So if you want that, maybe go for the elf one. But I did not like ColourPop's brow pencil. So, you know. And then I'm talking about my Z palette. So I have um, all of the round pans in here are from ColourPop and then the square ones are Makeup Geek, which Makeup Geek is really awesome too. They are, their shadows are kind of in the drugstore price point, but a little bit higher, a little bit higher up in the, the prices, I think. But they are really great quality and so are the ColourPop. So um, a couple of my favorites from ColourPop, let me see. I use this one every day or almost, I mean, like every time I, use this palette. I use this shade. It's called Made to Last. I'm surprised I haven't hit pan on it yet. And then also for for like a really simple eye look, I'll use Made to Last and then this one called High Strung. And then if you want more of like that duochrome, so I've used this over top of other like darker matte shades, but and it's amazing. It is called Glass Bowl, which this is like a cult favorite from them. It's like a duochrome kind of effect. And I've, I've noticed that some of their, like even when they're, you know, in a normal operation, they have some, like the eyeshadows kind of come and go. So if you can find these, awesome. But um, I don't think I'd be able to look and see because like half of them are sold out anyways. Um, and then I do like this highlighter. And this probably wouldn't work for most skin tones, but it, this is the highlighter in the shade Silvu Play. I think this is kind of like a chunky glittery. So if you're not into that, maybe you wouldn't like that. And then I got a couple of lip products from ColourPop. So this one is the Ultra Matte Lip in the shade Beeper. So this is that kind of classic, like mauve kind of color. And this is a really kind of like the, the KVD Lolita, that kind of vibe to it. Um, but I really, really love the formula of their Ultra Matte lips it's really nice and it's not drying and at least on me uh, if you have really 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 dry lips maybe this might not be for you but um definitely worth a try they're only i think this is like six dollars so then the last one is the ColourPop ultra blotted lip so this one is kind of just like the ultra matte but it's a little bit of a sheer color and this one is kind of like a my lips but better so if i'm wearing like a no makeup i will wear this one it's in the shade zuma and it's, it's a pretty similar color, like, in the tube to Beeper. Maybe just a tad on the... A little bit more on the pinky side. So this one is Zuma, and this one is Beeper. So they're pretty similar in the tube. And then this... Um, the Ultra Blotted goes on really thin. So you can layer it up. But it's the more you layer it up, the more it's going to get kind of thick. So, um, yeah, I definitely really, really like this one for just like no makeup days or if I just want a little bit of something, you know. So that's it for this video. Those are my cruelty-free drugstore makeup favorites that I have currently. I do want to try some more stuff from these brands. So if you have any suggestions, leave a comment. And uh, give this video a thumbs up if that was interesting. Subscribe if you miss any other ones. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.